The story of human evolution has often been told as one of steady progress, one in which more complex brains and genes gradually produced the species we see today. But a different interpretation has begun to be discussed, one that emphasizes the way other human species once held us back. While evidence suggests that Neanderthals and Denisovans may have not been separate species, in this video we will refer to them as separate species for the sake of simplicity. For most of the Pleistocene, Homo sapiens was not alone. We shared the world with Neanderthals, Denisovans, and even populations of Homo erectus. These species were not just neighbors. They were sources of interbreeding that introduced maladaptive genes, and they occupied ecological niches that prevented modern humans from expanding freely. Once these other humans went extinct, Homo sapiens appears to have undergone an extraordinary acceleration in cultural and cognitive development. The archaeological record shows that the period after the disappearance of other species is when rapid innovation, symbolic expression and population expansion flourished. The forbidden encounters with other humans were often a kind of poison, slowing our own adaptation. Their extinction, by contrast, released genetic constraints. An interesting parallel is the colonization of the Americas, which happened quickly in the absence of archaic humans, compared to the slower conquest of Europe, where Neanderthals had to be confronted and absorbed. The comparison highlights how the loss of competitors and the end of maladaptive interbreeding set the stage for the unprecedented growth of modern human brain power and civilization. The first component of this argument comes from genetics. The sequencing of Neanderthal and Denisovan genomes has demonstrated that interbreeding occurred repeatedly as modern humans left Africa. Most human populations today carry roughly 2% Neanderthal DNA, while Denisovan DNA is present in Papua New Guinea and Australia at levels of up to 5%. But these contributions are not uniformly beneficial. Indeed, one of the striking findings of genomic studies is the existence of large deserts in the human genome where archaic DNA has been almost completely removed. These genetic deserts indicate that many archaic genes were maladaptive and removed by natural selection. In other words, hybridization introduced harmful genetic variants that hindered reproductive success or development. Some Neanderthal-derived genes are associated with reduced male fertility in modern humans. While adaptive introgression did occur in specific cases, for example Neanderthal pigmentation genes in Europeans, the overall balance was mixed. The forbidden fruit of archaic interbreeding was in many cases a poison that slowed the progress of modern human evolution. Beyond the genetic effects, other human species posed ecological competition. Neanderthals dominated Europe and Western Asia for hundreds of thousands of years. Denisovans were widespread across Asia. Homo erectus persisted in parts of Southeast Asia, while other populations may have survived in Australia. Each of these species occupied landscapes, hunted prey, and maintained cultural traditions that limited the space into which modern humans could expand. As long as these groups survived, Homo sapiens was not free to fill all ecological roles. Their presence meant that colonization of new regions had to involve either direct competition, slow assimilation, or avoidance. In this way, other species acted as a barrier to the rapid global expansion of our own lineage, especially in the dense tropical jungles of Africa and Southeast Asia. The archaeological record suggests that the removal of these barriers coincided with an explosion of innovation. Symbolic art, musical instruments, complex burials, and long-distance trade networks all become widespread after 40,000 years ago, precisely when Neanderthals and Denisovans vanish. The Upper Paleolithic in Europe, with its cave paintings, carved figurines, and elaborate tool traditions, followed swiftly after Neanderthal extinction. The colonization of Siberia, Oceania, and the Americas occurred only after Denisovans and Homo erectus-like populations had disappeared. This temporal correlation suggests that once Homo sapiens was alone, cultural and cognitive evolution accelerated in unprecedented ways. The idea that interbreeding introduced maladaptive genes is supported by multiple lines of evidence. One example is fertility. 
Studies of modern human genomes reveal that Neanderthal ancestry is sharply reduced around genes expressed in male reproductive genes, suggesting that hybrids often suffered from reduced male fertility. This would have placed a drag on population growth, requiring many generations for natural selection to purge the incompatible alleles. Another example involves the immune system. While Neanderthal genes contributed some useful variants, others appear to have increased the risk of several genetic disorders in modern populations. These costs suggest that gene flow from archaic species was a double-edged sword. It diversified the genetic toolkit, but it also imposed a burden of maladaptation. As long as archaic populations persisted, interbreeding events could reintroduce problematic variants. Their extinction halted this cycle, leaving modern humans with a more streamlined genome that could accumulate adaptive changes more efficiently. The ecological argument can be illustrated with parallels from other animals. When one species occupies a niche, another species cannot expand into it without conflict. For example, wolves and coyotes exclude each other from certain habitats. Similarly, Archaic humans filled ecological roles that modern humans could not easily take over until they disappeared. Neanderthals were expert hunters of Ice Age megafauna in Europe. Denisovans were adapted to high-altitude environments. Homo erectus thrived in tropical Asia for over a million years. Each species carved out territory and prey sources that forced modern humans to adapt slowly or avoid those areas. Only with their disappearance could Homo sapiens move into every environment, from tundra to rainforest, with unchallenged dominance. The pace of expansion in different parts of the world underscores this point. In Europe, where Neanderthals had to be confronted and eliminated, the process took tens of thousands of years. Modern humans first entered Europe around 55,000 years ago, but Neanderthals persisted until around 40,000 years ago, with some late populations in places like Gibraltar possibly surviving a few thousand years longer. During this overlap, the archaeological record shows complex interactions, including some cultural exchange, competition for resources, and occasional interbreeding. The extinction of Neanderthals was not instantaneous, suggesting that modern humans faced resistance that slowed their advance. By contrast, the colonization of the Americas was far more rapid. Modern humans entered the Americas around 26,000 years ago, and within just a few thousand years they had spread across both continents. This rapid expansion was possible because there were no archaic human competitors in the New World. The absence of other species allowed Homo sapiens to move unhindered, filling ecological niches without the delays of competition or maladaptive interbreeding. The difference between Europe and the Americas illustrates how much faster human expansion occurred in the absence of archaic species. The Americas also provide insight into brain power and cultural development. The spread of Homo sapiens across two continents led to diverse adaptations. From mammoth hunting on the Great Plains, to fishing cultures on the Pacific coast, and agricultural developments in Central and South America. These innovations occurred swiftly in ecological terms. By contrast, in Europe, the coexistence with Neanderthals delayed the full expression of sapiens' creativity until after their extinction. This comparison suggests that the absence of competing human species allowed cognitive and cultural potential to unfold more quickly, just as removing weeds allows a plant to grow more freely. The idea that interbreeding held back evolution should not be confused with the claim that it was entirely negative. Without some admixture, modern humans might have lacked certain beneficial adaptations. Denisovan genes help Tibetans live at high altitudes, while Neanderthal pigmentation genes help modern humans survive in the dark cold of Europe. But the point is that these benefits were exceptions. The broader effect of repeated interbreeding was the introduction of maladaptive genes, as evidenced by their systematic removal from the genome. This means that as long as other species existed, they represented a source of genetic drag. Their extinction did not erase the adaptive benefits, since those had already been retained, but it did stop the continual influx of harmful variants. In this sense, extinction accelerated human evolution by allowing a kind of genetic pruning, leaving behind a more efficient genome. 
the extinction of other species also freed cognitive and cultural space. As long as multiple human species existed, symbolic and technological innovations could be compartmentalized within each group. Neanderthals may have used pigments and created ornaments, but their traditions did not spread widely. Denisovans may have had unique cultural practices that are now lost. These parallel traditions represented isolated streams of knowledge. Once only Homo sapiens remained, cultural innovations could spread across larger populations without being contained within ancient boundaries. The result was a cultural ratchet effect, where each innovation built on previous ones, leading to exponential growth in complexity. The sudden flowering of art and symbolism in the Upper Paleolithic may reflect this process. Freed from the fragmentation imposed by... There is also a demographic dimension. The extinction of competitors allowed sapiens populations to grow much faster. Larger populations generate more mutations, more cultural innovations, and more complex social networks. This positive feedback loop accelerates both biological and cultural evolution. For example, once Neanderthals were gone, sapiens groups expanded across Europe, establishing dense social networks that supported long-distance trade and shared symbolic systems like cave art. In the Americas, rapid population growth supported the diversification of cultures and eventually the rise of agriculture and civilization. The absence of competitors allowed demographic momentum that directly fueled innovation. Critics of this perspective might argue that correlation does not prove causation. The surge in cultural and cognitive development after 40,000 years ago could have been driven by climate change, demographic thresholds, or internal cultural dynamics, rather than the extinction of other species. However, the parallel with the Americas provides a compelling case study. The fact that sapiens conquered the Americas in just a few millennia, far faster than they displaced Neanderthals in Europe, is strong evidence that the absence of archaic humans facilitated rapid expansion. The Americas demonstrate how quickly sapiens could spread and innovate when unimpeded. Europe shows the drag imposed by the presence of other species. Taken together, the contrast strengthens the case that extinction of competitors was a key factor in our acceleration. The metaphor of forbidden fruit captures the paradox of archaic interbreeding. Like the mythical fruit, it offered knowledge, beneficial adaptations in some cases, but also carried poison in the form of maladaptive genes. As long as other species survived, modern humans were tempted into unions that brought both gifts and burdens. Only with their disappearance did the poison stop flowing. Extinction was thus a cleansing event, removing the sources of genetic and ecological hindrance. It allowed Homo sapiens to realize its full potential, both biologically and culturally. The modern world bears traces of this history. Every person carries a small percentage of archaic DNA, reminders of those ancient encounters. These fragments are like ghosts of extinct species preserved within us. But their overall influence is small compared to the massive expansion of sapiens genes and culture after the extinction of other humans. Our dominance today rests not only on our abilities, but also on the fact that no other species remain to slow us down. Had Neanderthals or Denisovans survived, our trajectory might have been very different, marked by slower progress and persistent competition. Their disappearance created the conditions for the rapid rise of modern human brain power and civilization. In conclusion, the extinction of other human species was a turning point in our evolution. Interbreeding with Neanderthals and Denisovans introduced maladaptive genes that slowed progress, while their continued existence blocked ecological niches. Once these species were gone, the drag ended. Genetic incompatibilities no longer entered our genome, ecological barriers disappeared, and cultural traditions merged into a single stream. The result was a rapid acceleration of expansion and innovation. The comparison with the Americas highlights how absence of competitors enabled lightning-fast colonization, while the slow process in Europe underscores how competitors restrained us. The forbidden fruit of interbreeding was often poison, but once the source of that poison was removed, Homo sapiens advanced at extraordinary speed. Our brain power, our culture, and our dominance are in part the outcome of extinction. 
other humans had to vanish for us to become fully human. Thank you for watching and exploring our share human history.